Hola. Good morning. I come from Pla in Mallorca, which is a man community of municipality. Is a community of municipalities. It's a local entity, so my point of view is also a municipal one. There are 14 small municipalities. In total, we have 37,000 inhabitants covering 592.6 square kilometers. This is important because we're, if we're assessing one kind of collection or another, the, the, all the characteristics of the population is something that has to be taken into consideration. We do door-to-door -door collecting. I would imagine that all of you will know. If not, I will explain. You'll know what this is. The People have a calendar, so every day they have to put out a different fraction of the waste to be collected. They put it in front of the outside their front door and it's picked up. What we've achieved with this is, is we started re uh, sorting in 2015 and we've got 48% is the rejection fraction, 25% is organic, 9% for. Um, uh, nine percent glass, nine percent paper, but this we're talking about this typical bag of rubbish, but what is not taken into account are the the pruning waste or the uh, the large volume waste where there are different criteria for calculating the percentages of recycling to attain the percentages that we have for sorting is to roll out this door-to-door -door plan that we rolled out in 2008. And if you look in the early years, before the system, before the door-to-door -door collection, we had a, a conventional collection system with containers, the green ones that you have out on the street, for the reject fraction. And then there were the different igloos for glass, for paper, for packaging and organic waste. The, this was done by the local council and the municipality would co con uh, collect the containers. As of 2008, we started door-to-door -door collection and we started to see an increase in sorting, especially because door-to-door -door collection meant that you could separate the organic fraction, which couldn't have been separated up until then. This is a fraction which is, has the greatest weight in the rubbish bag. We chose door-to-door -door collection, basically, because we were forced to. We didn't have any choice to make the system feasible. In Mallorca, we had a, a system with a landfill like you have here in the Canaries, but we moved from that to zero landfill. All the rejection fraction was treated or it was sorted and recovered, but otherwise it went to the incinerator and then it would be treated so, so it'd have a minimum environmental impact. But obviously this has a cost, which is paid by the municipality that has to have their waste treated. The cost of in incinerating a tonne of waste, which in our municipality that had been treated, we can see that this gradually increased, but it increased significantly. My colleague just now saying that a ton of reject costs 40 euros, it costs us 140 euros. So, so what we did, and another important point when deciding on which system to use, it costs us 140 euros now, but in Mallorca, the municipalities only get paid for taking for carrying the the rejection fraction the reject fraction all the other fractions don't get you don't get charged for glass paper and packaging and for organic matter is free we take it to the organic sorting plant and this doesn't cost the municipality anything they do that for free Here we have the kilos of rejection fraction that we collected and the, the, and the perfumants for, of the 14 different municipality against the cost of disposal. And we can see that the, the zero tons increases year by year 
considerably, and this was a cost that had to be paid for by the municipality, and obviously we had to this pass on to the local taxes that local people had to pay. As I've explained, the organic matter and other uh, fractions that are properly sorted don't get charged, and the way to reduce the local corporation's bill was to reduce the kilos of the rejection fraction that had to be treated. So we separated it into the different fractions with a higher percentage of recovered fractions. In the previous slide, we saw that the cost was reduced with the number of kilos of rejection that was collected. But we also need to bear in mind that by changing the collection system, a door-to-door -door system, on the one hand, this reduced the disposal cost as we rolled out measures that are as recycle improved. But the cost of collection, when we change from one system to another overnight to the door-to-door -door system, this pushed the costs up considerably. It must also be said that the previous collection system did not collect all, uh, it collected everything together, so it's virtually all reject fraction. So we've had a look at the cost, but another thing we need to look at are the revenues generated by collecting the different fractions separately. If we look at the kilos collected in 2015, and the revenues generated in 2015 from this, because as I've explained, here in Spain, the system that we have, the people who manufacture the products have to Part of the price of that has to cover the, the treatment, and this is paid to the municipalities. These are not closed prices. It depends on many different things. It depends on the kind of collection, depending on the rejection fraction that it generates. So, but these are the results that we got for revenues per kilo in 2015. There might be bonuses if you don't do it, or they can penalize it if you don't do it properly. So in 2015, our revenues were 701,000 euros for sorted collection. But apart from that, what is not collected in a sorted fashion had to go to the incinerator. So we didn't get revenues for that. And on top of that, we also have to pay the disposal cost. The disposal cost was 140 euros per ton, which means that one kilo of packaging, if it's properly sorted, I can generate 48 cents per kilo in revenues, but the total saving is 60 savings. So if one of my inhabitants throws a kilo of uh, packaging into the all-in-one bin, it costs us 60 cents. So let's make the comparison of the two systems now. If we looked at the conventional collection system, which is what we used before, and if we looked, if we'd used the same system without changing, now it would have cost us that the collection cost that we had, which was 198,000 uh, euros, which is much cheaper than our collection cost now. This has to be updated. We have to increase it, and we'd be in one million three hundred and one hundred thirty-four thousand euros. But if we hadn't rolled out the door-to-door -door systems, that means that the rejection fraction that would be generating costs would be exactly the same as we had in 2007. And with the current cost, because the disposal cost has increased, as we've seen, so our elimination cost would be 3,117,000 uh, without any revenues on the other side. Because as I said before, with this collection cost, this was the cost of the, re it was all rejection. So if we are to continue with the igloos in the, in the street and the revenues would have been kept by the island council in Mallorca. With the door-to-door -door system, the collection cost is higher, but if we get a percentage of recycling, this reduces the cost. And as we opted to increase the recycling rate, this has fostered, this has made this system very beneficial in this context. 
So we can see the cost of the service is three million and fifty one thousand. If we take away the revenues that we've got, the net cost is two million three hundred and fifty thousand, i.e. the fact that we've changed from a conventional collection system to a door to door collection system has saved the municipality about a million euros a year. The advantages that this has given that we have the financial one, it's the lower costs, which means lower local circles, their environmental advantage, the fractions are sorted, the recycle mass and social benefits, we generate more jobs than conventional collection. That is why the, the collection system is more expensive, because we've got more staff working on it. We also need to bear in mind that the door-to-door -door system, to make it efficient, then it requires a a minimum critical mass because the collection costs will really explode if you can't offset it, the disposal, with some revenue. What we saw before with a percentage of sorting in globally in the 14 municipality, all 14 have become involved in different ways over the years and we can see that the results obtained individually vary enormously depending on the measures that have been taken to foster recycling. I, measures can be taken to foster recycling and make the system work. First of all, you have to eliminate these containers from the streets. It's not compatible with a door-to-door -door system. If you saw if you look at the initial graph that I showed you when we started in 2008 with a door-to-door -door, for some years, we we went up from 10 to 20 percent of recycling, but that doesn't offset the increase in the cost of collection. Initially, door-to-door -door was voluntary. The surface was available, but conventional systems, we still had um, containers on the corners. But obviously this doesn't work, so we decided on the door-to-door -door system you have to eliminate the containers from the street, the curbside trees. The green points also have to be checked because door-to-door -door provides the services to people who live in the town. People who live outside of the town have to take their ways to the green spot and this has to be controlled, they have to be able to sort it into the different fractions and if possible there has to be somebody there to provide information for them. Surveillance campaign. What we do is, if you, if you don't do it properly, we don't pick up your rubbish. Initially, the, the, the dustman would have a look and then ensure that the contents matched the bag that it was in. And when we first rolled it out, even if it's done properly, then we will collect the rubbish anyway and we'll leave a note and then somebody will come around the day after tell them how to do it properly but then the time will come where you have to take the next step and if you don't sort the the rubbish properly then we will not collect it we'll leave the bag on your doorstep with a label so everybody will realize that you haven't done a decent job on sorting your rubbish another system that does work is what they call the red bag because this is a very bright, attractive colour, and this is what they do. The rejection system can only be disposed of in bags that they've already had to buy beforehand at the local town hall. Each bag costs a euro, and this makes them aware of the cost of the reject fraction. If they sort better, then they won't need as many bags. If they don't sort, then they'll have to buy more bags. This we do with people, with businesses, we've implemented this out. So people can buy these red bags if they don't sort properly, but it's expensive to do it that. Another system is like an MOT for waste. This is not like the red bag where you buy the bag and you know how much, how much it costs. What we do here is to considerably increase the local taxes that people pay for rubbish collection and if people don't want to recycle then they'll pay a high rubbish tax but if they want to recycle they can voluntarily sign up to a program with the local council that checks that the house does sort properly that they have the information and this gives them a rebate on the tax they pay for rubbish and then in general information for the people grassroots information it's important for people to know 
about the costs if they don't do it properly, and in the end, this will work against them both financially and environmentally, and to provide all the information. And that's my talk. Thank you very much.